I want you guys to remember this because you've heard all sorts of definitions of grace. You know, unmerited favor, um, undeserved kindness. I don't really like undeserved kindness because it makes you think, well, to deserve God's kindness, I gotta do more for him because it's, it's not deserved, right? Unmerited favor sounds pretty good because unmerited means unworked for, unearned. So you don't have to earn or work for God's favor, but undeserved kindness says, I don't deserve kindness. Well, how do you get kindness from God though? Well, I gotta do more. I, I grew up believing all that, right? And uh, Jehovah's Witness, I was Jehovah's Witness. Very, very, very extreme legalistic religion. And very corrupted, very corrupted um, thinking. It's poisonous actually. And uh, unfortunately, many of you that didn't grow up Jehovah's Witnesses were poisoned by other people's definition of what grace is. What really uh, disappoints me is when people that have Christ in them, and there are some people that that really move in the spirit. I mean, you know, they have a lot of boldness and they go out there and they heal the sick. And it's not because they work so hard for God that the anointing comes through for them and they heal but it's because they know who they are in Christ. Identity is very important. Some people are against identity. Oh, you guys, all about identity. It's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. As if God just thinks of you as a nobody, you're just a lump of skin on this earth, and your purpose is to serve Jesus, right? And that's it. But my Bible says God so loves you that he let his son get tortured, shredded apart, crushed, beaten, suffered terribly because of his love for you. So that all of that pain that Christ Jesus, that Jesus Christ went through, because of his pain, you get healing, right? Because of his stripes, whoopsh, 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 you're healed. spirit, soul, and body. You get what's called shalom, a shalom, which is peace. You know, a lot of Jewish people say shalom as a greeting to each other, like saying hello, but actually it's wholeness, wholeness, spirit, soul, and body, right? I mean, Jesus' body was crushed so that your body could be healed. Jesus had thorns put into his skull so that your mind could be healed. Jesus bled for you so that you could be cleansed and receive his spirit in you, his life, right? Life is in the blood. Life is in the blood, right? Blood, he, he bled out. Water and blood he bled out, right? Life is in the blood. Holy Spirit is that, that what he says, rivers of living water inside of you. There's a lot of things in the scripture that just blows you away when you, when you uh, search deeply into it. But anyway, so, there's people that have received Christ. Perhaps you have. I have. And I want to take that authority, Christ in me, and use it. Use it to the fullness that God gave me. And Jesus says... Greater things shall you do than even what he did. And that is just like amazing, you guys. Amazing. That's why all creation is crying out, eagerly waiting in expectation for the sons of God to manifest, to show up, right? And that means sons of God do you know who you are? Have you heard the word of who you are? Now take that word that you heard, let it sink down deep, deep inside, make it your own and do something with it. That's what James says. 
be a hearer. And when he says hearer, it's really powerful. Here is akuo in Greek, akuo. It's actually to comprehend and understand and make it your own. But now that it is, don't sit on that talent. Don't bury that talent. Activate it and it will multiply. Right? And I want to multiply what God has given me. That is my desire. And my desire is also to get you pumped up too. And get you motivated. So that you'll take what God gives you. Because creation is hoping that this will happen. Right? They Creation wants this to happen. When it says all creation, we're talking about every created thing. Every created being, including the angels. Because you will change the very atmosphere. Instead of hoping that you'll go to a building where the atmosphere will change you. No, you're going to step out and change the atmosphere anywhere you go. And if you do go into a building, the atmosphere changes because Christ in you is there. God loves you so much. Yes, that book is about his son, but his son suffered for you. And now that book is for you because your identity is in Christ and Christ in you. And this was all given to you. It was not sold to you. And it's not something you're slaving for or working for. Let me tell you, when you hear who you are, and when that becomes solidified in you, when you come into an agreement, where you truly from your heart say amen, and you're not questioning your identity anymore because the thief wants you to question your identity. Right? He wanted Jesus to question his identity at Jesus' baptism. He heard the voice of sonship. This is my son whom I greatly love. I approve of him. Beloved means greatly loved one. What's the first thing that happens? Well, Jesus is led to temptation, right? Out in the wilderness, like so many of us that receive Christ, suddenly test after test after test. The enemy does not want you to know who you are. That's why he said to Jesus, if, if, if you really are the son of God, command these stones to be turned into bread because you're hungry, dude. Starving out here in the desert. Are you sure you're the son of God? He's not taking care of you. You've been fasting for quite a while, buddy. Just turn the stones into bread. You can do it. You have that power and authority in you, don't you? If you're the son of God. If you're the son of God. Jesus didn't fall for the devil. He didn't fall for his schemes. And don't you fall for his schemes either. Because there's plenty of voices that are just taking the words of the enemy and ha, speaking them out. So that you'll get a different kind of faith by hearing. Yeah. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, and this Greek word is akuo, or akoe, akoe, A-K-O-E. It means, what are you listening to? What you're hearing, what you're listening to? Unfortunately, we have so much junk food going into our ears, we listen to the wrong voice. Hearing comes by the word of Christ, Paul says in Romans 10, 17. But my Bible says hearing comes by the word of God. Well, both translations are correct because you can look in Greek texts that say hearing comes by the word of Theos, which is God. And hearing, or a koe, comes by the word of Christos, which is Christ. So which one is it? It's both. Christ is the anointed, spirit-filled word of God. It is not the Old Testament, Old Covenant word of God that says you better do something to get right. You better do something for the favor of God. The word of Christ says... I did something and now you got my favor because you believed for it. So grace, let's go over this definition by the way. I want you to remember this definition for grace. Because that's what I started out in the video saying but I didn't get to that point until I just built up, built up, built up and here we are. Here 
we are. Write this down. Write this down. You can call it unmerited favor, undeserved, you, you, whatever you want to work for, undeserved, unworked for favor. Listen, it is favor. Because if you do somebody a favor, you're doing them a gift. You're doing something for them without payment. That is a favor. If you pay them, it's something they earned. But this is a favor. God gives you favor. He is for you, right? And he has given you the greatest favor ever, the fullness of Christ, which is the fullness of God, the anointed one of God, the spirit-filled one of God, who is now alive inside of your house, your temple called your body. All the fullness has been given to you for free. It cost God something, oh yeah, it cost him a whole lot. He had to watch his beloved one get whipped and beaten and shredded apart. I don't think I could even do that for a person if I had a dog. I couldn't do that with my dog or my puppy. Watch my puppy suffer for somebody. That's, that's just ridiculous. Let alone if I had a physical son. Watch my son suffer for a bunch of jerks, <laughs> right? But even in our darkness and wickedness and sin, he sent his son. He didn't give his son to you when you made your life right. And now he says, okay, all right, this person has made their life right. They did their best. They really cleaned up their act. So, Jesus, you go suffer for them now and bleed and all that stuff and die so they can receive your spirit. Because when he ascends, now his spirit can descend. He had to die and he was risen and he had to ascend so that his spirit could descend. So now his spirit is in each and every one of you, if you've believed him for it. So grace, this ultimate gift of God's dunamis power, this dynamite power, this explosive power called the spirit of God. No other power is greater than that. The spirit of God. In Hebrew, it would be El Shaddai, the almighty one, God almighty living inside of you, right? El Shaddai even means all-breasted one, right? The helper. Remember, Eve was called helper. God's helper in you. Eve was feminine. God creates man and woman in his image, male and female. He creates them. So all the qualities of male and female into you through this HaKodesh Ruach, the Holy One, the Spirit of God living inside of you, the Spirit of the Lord, the one who is joined to the Lord is one Spirit. You and Jesus, 1 Corinthians six seventeen. You and His Spirit are now one, right? Because God is Spirit. So all the essence of God's Spirit is in you. And this was given to you by grace. So let's identify what grace is, right? Grace is... God's free, abounding favor. Free, because you don't work for it, you don't earn it, and it's not for sale. Free, abounding, porisio in Greek, porisio. In fact, not only is his favor abounding, even if your life is a mess, Romans 5.20 says, even when sin increases, and by the way, sin is a noun. Sinning is the verb. Even when your sin increases, that noun called sin, that includes sickness, right? Sickness is part of that sin package. Sicknesses, diseases, and all the curse, right, that Adam entered into. That's included 
in even your trespasses, transgressions, and all that stuff, right? Iniquity. But it's also your sickness because he was beaten so that you could be healed. Do you understand? By his stripes we are healed, but also by his stripes you are forgiven as well because healing and forgiveness goes hands in ha hand in hand. I could do a whole sermon on that right now because Jesus, Jesus, he, uh, he, um, he reveals that to us when he speaks, but uh, that'll be another day. I've done it before. We'll do it again. So, well, yeah. So sin, one big package deal, even when your sin is on the increase or even including your health problems and issues and all that stuff. Well, his grace is now in Romans 5.20, Hooper, Parisio. Remember, Parisio is abounding. What is Hooper? Hyper or super or extremely overflowing immeasurable grace. Abounds immeasurably in your life, even if you're at your very worst today. So grace, remember this, God's free, abounding, overflowing, overwhelming favor. Do you understand? Now let me ask you this question. Have you been trying all these years to work for God's favor? Well, if you, if you have, then I need you to do something right now. I need you to change the way you think. Change the way you think. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things below. Set your mind on what Christ says, not what religion says. Okay? And when you set your mind on the things above, it means you change the way you think. In Greek, it's called meta, change, noia, thinking. Change thinking, noia, thoughts, what's in your mind, the way your mind is choosing to think. Is my mind set on what religion says? Because what religion says is exactly what the enemy tells religion to say. Or are you setting your mind on the things above what the Spirit of the Lord says? Right? Now listen, those things above have descended. He ascended so that the things above could descend and be located right into the realm of your body inner 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 realm which is called the most holy of holies your spirit right that is the center of your body out of your belly this is the center of your being out of your belly will flow rivers of living waters so when you change the way you think you will no longer be working for god's favor You'll be working from God's favor. Do you understand? You are already favored. So take that position of favor. Know that all of heaven's gifts are deposited into your spirit freely. Gifts. All the dunamis power of the spirit of the Lord. Dunamis dynamite power is stored up inside of you waiting for you to bubble forth and overflow like a well and pour it out and distribute it all over the earth all over creation who is crying out for us to manifest to use what we have been given i hope this stirs you up i hope this pumps you up and motivates you you guys come on i gotta be a spiritual personal trainer and that's what I'm doing. And I hope you receive it well, believe it well. And if you do believe it, that means now that you have had a mind change. And once you have had a mind change, now you have done something called meta no way. Oh, metanoia, metanoia means change your mind or change your thinking. But metanoia says you have changed the way you think. 
it has been changed, right? And that makes you a truster and a believer. That means you live in faith, right? Faith is trusting, trusting and believing, right? Trusting what God says is true. When you trust what God says is true, that makes you a believer. You are now living in faith. Do you understand? Beautiful. All right, you guys. I hope you all have a great day. I love you all. And I'll see you in the next video.